Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and lift up the name of the Lord, for the Lord is good. Take this, take the monitor. Yeah, there you go. The Lord is good. No. Take that speaker down a little bit. The Lord is good and greatly to be praised. Come on and make some noise out here as our praise team gets ready to lead us in worship. Good morning, good morning. How's everyone this morning? God bless you, God bless you. Good to see you on this morning. How many are blessed and know it? You know, some people are blessed and don't even know it, or they don't think that they're blessed. Uh, but come on and sing this with us. Put your hands together. Everybody say, Amen. Everybody say 
Jesus. No matter what you bless, yes, yes, yes. And no matter what's going on, our God still reigns. Does he reign in your life this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus.
We did it, Union. In spite of Corona, we did it. We did it. Hallelujah. So we just want to say that you still have a chance to give. In case you didn't have it last month, maybe you had to wait until the first of the month. That you're still able to give if you like, if you foresee. You remember all the avenues, all the ways that we have for you to give. Through Giver Five website through Facebook and again if you just want to give it to Pastor Harrison directly you can cash app him at dollar sign pass capital P-A-S Harrison H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N so let's give them another hand hallelujah Jesus thank you Lord
told you to wave your hand. I see you. I see you. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. moments I want to talk about when the wonder worker walks towards you. When the wonder worker walks toward you. My brothers and sisters in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I know many of us are wondering when is all of this madness going to come to an end? When, when will we be able to get back to normal? When will uh, we be able to enjoy many of the things that we have enjoyed before, but for whatever reason, we are not able to do so right now. When will we be able to travel again? When will we be able to hug one another again? When will we be able to fellowship one with the other? When will uh, we be able to go back to what we consider to be normal life? And even in the midst of the abnormalities that, go, that are going on, even in the midst of the irregularities that are happening, even in the midst of everything that appears to be chaotic, yet still there is a challenge before the people of God to not be bent out of shape over what you see, but recognize that we serve a God that even in the midst of chaos can still bring peace in your life. I wish I had about 25 folk out here that understand that even in the midst of the storm, peace will still show up. Well, when we examine this pericope of scripture, it's an amazing moment that is going on in the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. And 
The reason that it's so amazing is due to the fact that Jesus has performed many miracles. As a matter of fact, the latest miracle before we get to this point in our text is he has fed thousands. And it was an unbelievable moment because they had been listening to Jesus. They've been listening to his teaching. They, they had been enthralled by the fact that here was somebody sharing with them something that they had never heard before. And in the midst of all that's going on, there's, there's a problem going on. And you really have to understand the historicity of this text for you to know that there's an issue going on. There's a problem going on. And, and the problem is that there's nothing wrong with the healings. There's nothing wrong with the teaching. There's nothing wrong with what's been going on. But the problem is, is the misnomer of the people. Even though people were healed, even though people were delivered, even though people were being set free, the problem was they now saw in Jesus the probability of being able to take over the kingdom that had held them hostage for so many years. Nobody had ever walked like Jesus. Nobody had ever talked like Jesus. Nobody had ever performed the, the miracles that Jesus had performed. And because of them being overwhelmed at his presence, they wanted to force him to become king. See, I got to tell y'all something. What I need y'all to understand on today is don't never let nobody push you into something that you weren't meant to be. Oh, I know y'all y'all can't handle what I just said. Too many people, too, too many, too many people want, want to make you be something that you're not. Want to move you into something that you were never created to be. And Jesus understood this clearly that even after he had fed the multitude, even after he had performed miracle after miracle, he moved the disciples so that the influence of the crowd would not be a part of their psychological makeup. Y'all will catch this in a minute because uh, the disciples hear stuff Jesus don't hear. The disciples are exposed to stuff that Jesus has not been exposed to. And in order order to pro protect them from being caught up in a moment that's not of God, he had to move them first away from the crowd. Y'all will catch that in a minute because, see, every now and then, you got to learn how to protect people from foolishness. Y'all will catch that later on. Somewhere along the line, you got to love those close enough to you to keep them from manipulating you to do something that they themselves ain't got the unction to do. I know y'all ain't catching what I'm saying, but Jesus had to remove the disciples from all of the people because they didn't mind the healing. They didn't mind being fed, but they wanted that Roman government brought under control. They wanted to be back in control of the government and that's not the reason. You see, you better know what you've been birthed to do. Y'all will catch that later. You better know, don't you dare let other folk talk you into stuff and then make a fool out of you. And then when you look foolish, they walk away and can't be found in the midst of this text. Jesus tells his disciples, he says, here's what I want you to do. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get in this boat. I need you to go to the side of Bethsaida and then go there and I'll meet you there. But Jesus is still dealing with the crowd. Mm -hmm. Y'all will catch that later in a minute. And uh, the Bible says that after he has protected his disciples, after he has removed his disciples, he now, after he has finally dismissed the crowd, went up into a mountain to pray. I don't know about you, but you better have someplace quiet that you can go to to get a prayer through. I know, I know, I know, and I understand, I understand, I understand clearly. The Bible says that we're supposed to pray without ceasing, but there are some moments in your life when you need to steal away. There's some moments in your life when you need to move in another direction. There's some moments in your life when you need to get away from the clatter and the noise. There's some moments in your life when it needs to be nobody but you and the Lord. Can I, can, can, I, can, can I tell you something? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you something? Why do you think the pandemic showed up? 
Oh, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. Why, 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 why do you think that, that, that we... Okay, I can't say that. I can't because y'all ain't got no business being at the bars and y'all ain't got no business being at the clubs and y'all... Yeah, I see, ain't a horn honk on that. <laughs> no, don't try to honk now. Uh-uh, y'all missed y'all moment. Uh, yeah, yeah y'all missed, missed that moment. Yeah, y'all ain't got no business partying and clubbing and drinking and doing all that other kind of stuff. We're the redeemed. A whole lot of group didn't do nothing. <laughs> if the shoe fit. Oh, I'm going to wait till this one marinated. If y'all think for one second, I'm going to move on after that Kodak moment. Oh, you got another thing coming. You need to understand because we're the redeemed. We ought to live redeemed. We ought to walk redeemed. And it ought to happen more than just on a Sunday morning. Yeah, his text says, Ooh, how do you know when you done stepped in something you can hear? And so in the midst of this, in the midst of this text, we see that Jesus has now gone into the mountains to pray. He has gotten himself in a position and a place whereby he can talk to the master uninhibited. See, you got to every now and then, you got to cut off your phone. You got to cut off your television. You got to cut off your radio. You got to cut off some stuff so you can have some time with you and the Lord. You got to cut off some things. Matter of fact, can I go a little bit further? Sometimes you got to cut off some folk that are standing in the way of you talking to the Lord so you can clearly hear what the Lord has to say midst of this we see quite clearly that Jesus has now stolen away he's now rested himself but in the midst of resting he is also meditating he is also uh, calling upon the name of his father so that he can be rejuvenated for the next move of his father through him and then he notices something in the midst of his observation in the midst of the mountain that he was in in the midst of those moments he noticed that the boys were struggling they were struggling in the midst of the sea. They were struggling in the midst of the water. They were struggling because the wind was contrary against them. Now, y'all gotta, gotta think about this. You gotta think about this for just a moment about the power of the wind because uh, there were no sails on these boats. These boats had oars and they rowed, but they recognized clearly that the wind had gotten into the water and caused the water to push against the boat in the direction they want to get in. You got to remember something, my brothers and sisters. Anytime you're doing anything for the Lord, there will come a moment where the devil will try to push back. He will try to do everything in his power to keep you from getting to your destination. I wish I had about three or four people that understand that whenever the enemy is pushing back, that's when God's getting ready to push you into something that you could have never had if it hadn't been for the pushback. Look at this text. You see quite clearly he notices their struggle and he does not immediately move. See, that's the part of the text that many of us uh, cannot quite uh, uh, comprehend about God is because we think that he's supposed to move at the snap of the finger. But see, every now and then God is developing something in you in the struggle that could not be developed without the struggle. Struggle. Ah, y'all, y'all, y'all will catch that later on. You see, every now and then, when you go through different trials and different troubles and different issues, God is developing something in you that you could not have seen nor comprehended if it had not been for the struggle. The Bible says. And, and that's the thing that you also have to look at. You got to look at this clearly. The boys didn't give up. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all forgot that not too long ago, they were in a similar situation. He was on the ship, and they got bent out of shape. And they went down and woke him up and said, don't you care that we perish? So now, they have a new determination, but their new determination was not moving them in the direction that they need to go in. But here's what they did. They did not quit. They did not stop. They did not give up. I wish I had about eight or nine people out here that understand that no matter how difficult that moment might be, you can't quit. You can't 
give up. You got to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God and Jesus Christ. And even when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. I wish I, I wish I had some folk that's been through all kind of ups and downs and trials, tribulation, hurt and pain. I wish I had somebody out here who has been through some stuff and you recognize only God could have brought I wish I had a bunch of folk out here that understand that I'm better on the other side of that situation because God never left me. text says the text says the text says quite clearly that in the midst of their moment of struggle in the midst he observed their struggle <laughs> he observed their toil they're rowing and 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 it's around about uh, around about the fourth watches between uh, 3 and 6 a.m. around about the time when it is as dark as it can be but close enough to light to show up oh God, let me preach this like you gave it to me. You see, every now and then, God will allow you to be in a dark moment, but light will show up if you just keep pressing on. Text says, text says, text says that it's around between 3 and 6 a.m. that Jesus walks on the water. It's not light enough for them to see who it is, but it's also dark enough for them not to comprehend what's happening. All they know is they are in trouble and Jesus this time is not on the boat with them. Look at the text. The text says quite clearly in the midst of everything that's going on, in the midst of everything that's happening, he walks on the water. Now you gotta catch this if you don't catch anything else. It does not say that the storm and stop while he walked. Oh, I wish, <laughs> I wish I had about five people that caught what I said. Jesus does not have to wait for the calm to come. He can walk on your chaos. I wish, I wish I had somebody who could shout on the fact that even while I was in chaos. So, 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 the text. The text, the text says, the text, the text says that in, in the midst of all of this, I thought the horn got stuck. Yeah, in the midst of all of this, glory to God, ain't nothing wrong with a, with a long shout <laughs> because you understand it was only God that showed up in your midnight moment and let me press on. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, Bible says that Jesus comes walking on the water. He's walking on the water. He's walking on the water. He's walking on the trouble. He's walking on the trauma. He's walking on the tribulation. He's walking on the midst of all of it. He's walking on it. He's walking on it. And as he walks on it, he heads toward where the disciples are. He's walking on the waves. He's walking on the trauma. He's walking on the trouble. I got to say it again. He's walking on the waves. He's walking on the trauma. He's walking on the trouble. I got to say it one more time because I'm getting ready to get happy in just a second. He's walking on the waves. He's walking on the trouble. He's walking on the trauma and as he walks on it, the Bible says that he almost decided to walk past them. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. But wait a minute. I moved a little too far too fast. Let me back up for just a second so I can add what I saw in the text. The text said that he walked toward. Now, wait a minute. Now, can I can I ask? I need to ask. I need to ask a question of those of you that have people that you love and you find them in a bad situation. Do you take your time and walk? Or do you rush to get to them? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I, I need to ask that question again because maybe you ain't never loved nobody enough that when you see them in trouble or they're hurt that you come running to their rescue. That's what we normally do. But the text says that Jesus When you know who you are, 
You ain't got to be in no hurry because you already know what's going to happen when you show up. I, if I could run around this parking lot, I could do that right there on that one right there. God ain't got to hurry up. We'll show up right on. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. text, text. Woo! The text says that he walks on the water and almost walks past them. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, and the Bible says that as they saw something, they screamed at the something they saw, not really knowing what they saw. The text says they thought it was a ghost. Which means there's a lot of their superstitions that are still in them that Jesus is getting ready to remove. See so y'all, y'all, y'all can't. I need, I need to, I need to ask, I need to ask this question. Are there some misnomers about the Lord that later on in life? God had to erase so you could really know who he is? Can I give you a couple of them? The man up yonder, he ain't never been up yonder. He's present. Okay, y'all will catch that later. And, and so in the midst of this, Jesus is proving to the disciples that just because you think Think it's something doesn't mean it really is. And so in the midst of this, he almost walks past them. And they creamed and they hollered because they thought it was a ghost. But how many of you know, did we serve a savior that knows how to get rid of all your superstitions? I don't know about you, but I don't need a rabbit's foot. I don't need luck. I don't need, see, I'm losing some of y'all. I don't need chance. See, why would you trust in a chance when you can have the real thing? I wish you'd look at somebody in the car around you and tell them, I got the real thing. So in the midst of this situation, in the midst of this problem, in the midst of this circumstance in the midst of this situation they cried out because they thought it was a ghost and they were troubled and didn't know what to do and immediately the Bible says he said to them be of good cheer I, I wish I, I wish I had somebody in here that caught what I said and I've said this on many occasions that the Lord always speaks before it happens it's so on the midst of this text, he says, be of good cheer. You don't have to worry because I've been watching your trials. I've been watching your toil. I've been watching your struggle. I've been watching how you've been toiling all night long. I've been watching all of the things that have been happening to you. I've been, I've been watching all of the disappointments. I've been watching all of the misgivings. I've been watching all of those times when you trusted in things that let you. I wish I had uh, about three or four people in here that, that understands uh, that we serve a God uh, who watches you right where you are. Uh, I don't know about you. I'm glad that I serve a God who watches over me. Is there anybody out here who can testify that all day, all night, God is watching over me? Well, after a while, and by and by, the Bible says, I got to tell y'all something. Be Jim, it's not a ghost, it's not a happenstance, but it is I, and since it's me, don't be afraid, this is the thing that I love about this text, because
because when you go to chapter 5, you will see what Jesus says to the storm. Peace be still. But when you get to chapter 6, he don't speak to the storm, but he speaks to the ones in the storm. Is there anybody out here who can thank God that he spoke to me while I was in my storm? Is there anybody here who can give God some glory? He spoke to me while I was in my trauma. Is there anybody out here that can give God some glory? He spoke to me in the midst of my tribulation. But do I have anybody here that understands that trouble ain't gonna last always? For the text says, as soon as his foot stepped in the boat, as soon as his presence stepped in, the Bible says that the wind ceased. Well, I but I'm glad that I serve a God who can speak calm to my situation. The Bible says that they were amazed beyond measure. They had seen water change to wine. They had seen him giving sight to the blind. They had seen him working miracles they have seen the dead raised again but I'm so glad that I serve a God that when my wonder worker when my heavy Lord sharer when my turbo bearer when my in the midst of my storm when the joy of my salvation when the ruler of every nation when he shows up he shows out is there him who can praise his name I, I, Because 
when he shows up, when he shows up, he shows out. Hawk your horn if you know he'll show out. Now really honk your horn if you know he'll show out. Although the storms keep on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. lies within it reassure as I keep my eye upon the distant shore I know you lead me safely to that blessed place he has some fairy tale this Jesus that we're talking about is very 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 real he has transformed our lives he has changed our lives as a matter of fact he's still changing us he's still transforming us into the image of his son so you might say well what do I have to do I didn't ask you to join a church I just asked you to join Jesus somebody say well how do you do that it's real simple it's real easy all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you'll be saved. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I'm a sinner. 
I'm a sinner and I'm tired of being a sinner. So I want you to save me, Lord. I want you to save my soul. And if you said that as quick and simple as that was, Jesus has now taken residence in your life. If, if you don't mind, would you just inbox us or would you let us know that you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your life so that we can pray for you and pray with you. And in the midst of your acceptance of Jesus Christ, and yes, we're in a pandemic moment. Some churches are open, some churches are not. But you need to find a pastor somewhere. Even if it's not us, you need to find a pastor somewhere so you can grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I guarantee you, it's the best thing you could ever do by coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Do I have anybody out here that can say the same thing? It's the best thing that you have ever done. Well, it's time to give. Somebody might say, why, why give? And I'm going to say, why not? Why not trust the Lord in a pandemic moment? Why not believe the Lord in a pandemic moment? Why not, why not trust him in a pandemic moment? We're a tithing church. That's what we do. We're tithers. We tithe because we believe in the integrity of God's word. We're tithers. We understand clearly that we serve a God who will never fail us. We serve a God who will be right there by our side every step of the way. And we give because God has given so much to us. He has blessed us so abundantly and beyond comprehension. 10% belongs to God. It's the, it's the Lord's. It's the Lord. The tithe belongs to the Lord. And when you give to the Lord what belongs to him, there is not one thing that he will withhold from you. Let me share something with you. And this is important for you to know and to understand. There's many ways for you to share. If you're watching us by Facebook and you're on Union's page, all you have to do is follow the directions and you'll be able to give. If you're on our website, all you have to do is follow the directions on the website so that you'll be able to give. You can give through uh, Givelify. Just find the Union Baptist Church 528 Lincoln Avenue and you can give. You can also give through cash app, dollar sign, U-N-I-O-N 528, and you'll be able to sow into the work of the ministry. Our ministers of order are coming around right now. They're coming around right now. They're coming around right now. We want to bless the Lord in our giving on today. We want to bless him. We want to give him glory through giving. That's right. I'm glad I got one person that can honk their horn on giving. Glory to God. For those that uh, maybe the heat was too much for you, uh, you can either put it in the mail or you can drop it off right in the mailbox. It's a secured box right at the front of the old building. You can just drop it off in there. But you need to be able to support the work of giving, I mean the work of ministry, even in moments like this. Even in moments like this, we need to give unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, I forgot Katrina's walking around with her her device in her hand if you want to give electronically that way that's why she's there to help you in giving
Our Father and our God, we are so grateful for the privilege to be able to worship you in giving. We ask, Lord, that you would continually bless those who are supportive of the work of ministry through tithes and offerings. We're grateful, Lord, that they believe in the integrity of the meeting to the, to the, of the ministry to the point that they're willing to support what we do. We ask for your continual guidance uh, upon the administration of these gifts to your glory and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. That's it. Now, before all of y'all run out of here, um, and I don't know where that cat went. It was underneath somebody's car, so y'all need to be careful. Oh, that's your cat. Okay. Under your car. It likes your car. Um, well, y'all just be careful. Or we'll have a, a cat. So before, before, before all y'all leave, Lady Harrison, come here. John, don't let them leave out of here yet. We haven't even given the benediction. Now y'all know we don't. Y'all know we don't do that. Lady Harrison and I. Okay. Lady Harrison and I need to publicly thank you. We want to thank uh, those that uh, work with Minister Reed uh, to bring uh, an unusual celebration to pass. Uh, there are those, yeah. I want to thank God for uh, Henry. And I, I need to thank Henry for his electronic genius in doing what he did. Thank God for Pastor Cryer. Thank God for Dr. Odom. Thank God for Bishop Paramore. Then thank God for Dr. Turner for last Sunday. They blessed us tremendously. Um, like I said, our praise team, our musicians, uh, everyone who did anything in any way, shape, form, or fashion, we just wanted to say thank you. We wanna thank you for your gifts of love in a pandemic moment, you you were like beyond measure. It was unbelievable what you did, amen, in moments like this, and you have definitely shown your love. And we wanted to do it publicly uh, so that you know, then we'll post something on Facebook later on, but we want you to know publicly that we love you and we appreciate what you do. I'm gonna move out the way so Lady Harrison can share hers too. Praise the Lord. First, I want to thank God for allowing such an awesome celebration for this 25th pastoral anniversary. If it wasn't for his grace and his mercy, we wouldn't be here. Thank you, Union, for making it happen against all the odds. It wasn't as grand as you had wanted it to be, but it was marvelous in its own and unique way. Man. Inside or outside, you didn't let the coronavirus stop you. I'm willing to bet this type of virtual celebration was a first and a trendsetter. Amen. 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 Thank you to everyone on the anniversary committee, the praise team, the musicians, the media ministry, and everyone else that played a part. Also want to thank our family and friends for their support. They were willing to purchase tickets for the banquet, and some, some of them made financial blessings. I just want to say we appreciate you. And as Pastor said, all the pastors, that took a part in this. We thank them for all of their encouraging words and for such a dynamic message. Pastor and I appreciate all the love cards, 
all the love, the cards, the gifts, and everything that was presented to us during the celebration. There were so many surprises, especially the drive-bys. That first one really broke us down. We could, we just couldn't believe it. That was one of our most emotional times. And you know I cried. And I think it started by the time the fourth or fifth drive-by. And if you saw the newscast, Pastor broke down during the interview. I had to write my words down because I had so much I wanted to say. So I had to write it down so I could shorten it up a little bit. And I won't be too, before you too long. The second was the video presentation on Sunday. The topper was to see Brother Mike Moses at the end of that video. We are going to miss him and all of his humor. But everything was just so beautiful. It was just so beautiful. I'm sorry. I don't wait, apologize. And we know that it was done from your heart. Union, I am grateful that I was allowed to be your pastor's wife, your first lady. wife, your first lady, and your only lady for these 25 years. Oh, it's been a privilege to serve you. As I always say, you are the best church a pastor and a first lady could ever have. about when I first came to Union, I really didn't know anything. I looked at it as Pastor Harrison's ministry. I said he was a pastor and all I needed to do was show up. <laughs> I was shy and I wasn't comfortable being in the forefront and I still don't like it any better. I think it's because it took, but now it's better because I think of you as my family. I remember the first time I was asked to speak here at Union. It was a fundraiser called the Green Tea. I was a nervous wreck and I tried everything I could to get out of speaking. <clears throat> but there was a lady by the name of Sister Helen Cook. <laughs> And I believe she was the one that asked me to speak. And she was a lady that didn't take no for an answer. But I remember the one beautiful smile, and I know there was others, but Sister Louise Adams, she sat at that table and I remember her smile. And that kind of helped me. And then there was Mother Bowdry, and Mother Love, and Mother Draper. Sister Betty Bowers, Dr. Jean Williams, Sister Ethel Rollett, Sister Crenshaw, Sister Elsie, I can't remember her last name. Elsie Kellum. And it probably was others, and I can't remember at this time. Those ladies were my encouragement. They let me know when it was right, and they let me know when it was wrong. Union allowed me to grow into the person that I am today. I have
have experienced and learned so much. I have enjoyed our travels together, traveling on cruises to the National Baptist Convention, Ohio Baptist State Convention, and the Full Gospel. I also enjoy working with the ladies at our retreats, prayer breakfasts, and now our conferences and game nights. Many have come and gone through the years, but God is still blessing Union. Let's give Union a hand. Amen. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to my husband, Pastor Michael Harrison. Thank you for being a good soldier and a real leader for these 25 years. Yes. not always been easy, but you weathered the good, the bad, and the ugly. You had the will, and God made the way. I want to encourage you to continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Amen. And my prayer is that God will bless us to have many more years here at Union. Thank you, Union, so much for all that you have done for us. God bless you, and to God be the glory. Amen. My God, my God. Come on, give Lady Harrison another. Here, here's, here's, what, uh, here's, here's what I need you to do. Please be safe. Please be careful. Uh, the temperatures are going to be ridiculously hot. And so every now and then kind of check up on our seniors to make sure that they are okay. Also, as we get after I pray and we get ready to dismiss, please follow these gentlemen who are going to show you how to get out of here. Um, don't run each other over prayerfully. The cat is gone. If not, uh, oh well, ain't nothing I can do about that. Amen. Grateful to God. Don't forget 6.30 uh, on Wednesday will be our midweek worship and we'll be doing it on uh, YouTube, the website, and Facebook. Let's pray. Our Father, our God, our Lord, our Savior, uh, to you be glory and praise for there's none like you. You're awesome and mighty and powerful. Thank you, Lord, for even in hot weather, you permitted us to come together to worship and to praise your name. Now, Lord, we're getting ready to leave this, uh, uh, this setting outside, but we will never leave your sight. Uh, keep us in your care is our prayer. It's these and all of the blessings we ask. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray and ask it all. And the people of God either shout amen or honk amen. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer.